So uh, sometimes when people are doing visual, uh, therapists are looking at visual fields, they'll do a thing where they sit in front of the person and ask them to look for objects. Well, we're not going to do it that way because what they've found is that when you do that, the person is seeing your arms all over the place. So you don't want to have them give away the clues. You really want to get an accurate reading. Um, so we are going to do what's a two-person confrontation test. And so I'm going to stand behind her, but then I will have somebody standing in front of her telling me if she moves her eyes, because I want her to not move her eyes while I do this test. Okay, so I want you to just pick a target that's straight in front of you. I want you to keep your eyes on there and never take your eyes off of that target. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, bring an object into your visual field. I want you to point to it when you see it. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. 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 Okay. Okay, good. Okay, good. Good. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, so a couple of comments about that. Um, uh, first of all, you've got to uh, have an idea of what her visual fields should be. And visual fields aren't, as we, as we imagine on ourselves, are not a big 180 degree circle, all right? Our, our visual fields are not that far. If you do it on yourself and you go straight out from your eyes, on either side, you have about 95 degrees of visual field. So if you go from the middle, all right, from here out to here, you have just a little bit beyond 90 degrees on either side. That's, that's what you should have. That's about normal, about 95 degrees. And up above, if you look at this level straight up, she should have about 65 degrees. And from underneath, if you bring your, your hands in from underneath, you'll see that you have about 75 degrees down below. So that's what I'm expecting her to have. It was a big oval, and she responded fine. The last thing I did was the, the two stimuli at once. And so what I'm looking for there, usually people, if you have something like this bright, people will see a red one first before they'll see a blue. But I'm really looking to see how far I have to keep bringing this in before um, they see that there are two targets. And what you'll see, with someone who has homonymous hemianopsia, this is when we start to really see a difference in that versus unilateral inattention. inattention. With homonymous hemianopsia, I'm gonna bring this target in. If she's lost her visual field on the left side, I'm gonna bring this target in and she's not gonna see it till it's exactly in front of her, all right? There, her visual field cut. If she's keeping her eyes straight, she's keeping her head straight, she's not gonna see it till I'm boom, right there, every time. With unilateral inattention, your key to knowing that it's unilateral inattention versus homonymous hemianopsia is that it's going to be much more inconsistent with unilateral inattention. Remember, that's a sensory processing. So if I snapped my fingers, all right, while I'm out here, she may be able to see it. Even without moving her eyes, she might be able to see it, all right? Um, if I touched her on the shoulder over here, she might be able to see it. If there was some kind of sensory input, she may be able to see the target. But with homonymous hemianopsia, she's not going to see it consistently until it's right in front of her.